The following podcast is produced or sponsored by a community member. The content views and opinions expressed are those of the participants and do not reflect those of BMC or the town of Belmont. BMC welcomes your comments. Call us at 617-484-2443 or email us at access at belmontmedia.org. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our annual TOST Toddcast, Belmont Watertown Thanksgiving Day football preview, airing on both the Belmont Media Podcast Network as well as simulcast on BMC channels 8, 9, 28, and 29, and on belmontmedia.org. I'm Todd Bloniars, joined as I've been all season by Belmont High School head football coach Jan Kuman. And on this special edition of the Toddcast, we are also joined by all five senior captains from the 2019 Belmont Marauders, and uh, we've got them right there on camera as you're watching us uh, from left to right. It is uh, quarterback Avery Arno, uh, wide receiver defensive back Zach Hubbard, fullback linebacker uh, Ryan Santoro, uh, wide receiver defensive back Justin Rocha, and offensive and defensive lineman Ryan Hoffman. Uh, guys, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to this uh, show. Uh, thanks uh, very much for uh, joining us here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, having All right. I, the, one of the first things I have to start <laughs> off with uh, here, uh, how, let me just really quick with you, Coach. How difficult or easy was it to pick these five to be your, uh, your captains this year? Um, I mean, our captain selection process starts at our banquet. I mean, really, it, honestly, I think it starts junior year, you know, in terms of, of the team looking and seeing who's kind of stepping up and, and, and being a leader. Um, and then when we get into the banquet, we vote. Um, the returning players will all vote for who they think would make a quality captain. <clears throat> and then um, we as coaches kind of have the final say. Um, for these five guys, it, it was a pretty easy selection process. You know, uh, their teammates all voted them, you know, high kind of all were in the same kind of vote bracket for teammate respect. Um, they're all extraordinarily hardworking guys. Uh, they lead in their own way. Um, very different approaches to leadership throughout the five. Um, but it was a pretty easy uh, decision, uh, to be perfectly honest. It was, it was a pretty easy decision. Um, and they've done a great job with it, you know. We say that, that leadership is being the first to serve and the last to be served. Um, and that's something that I think these guys have taken, taken quite seriously. Um, even Arno, you know, and uh, <laughs> it starts already. So yeah, it was, it was a pretty easy selection. They were kind of natural captains. Oh, good, good. Let me, well, let me ask all you guys, like how long have you all been playing football together? Does it go back to say like Pop Warner or even like you know, prior to that? I mean, how long have you guys all really been teammates together? Um, I've been playing ever since I was seven years old. I started in second grade, Pop Warner. So I go back a long time. I know Ryan was definitely on the team yeah. with me. Yeah. And a lot of us go back to the middle school days. Yeah, I'd say a lot of us are junior marauders. We played in the middle school team. So uh, the first year that program got started was all was when we were in seventh grade. So uh, I think all these guys, except for Rocha, played uh, on that team. And then we played freshman ball together, except for Rocha. Then Rocha came in sophomore year. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've been definitely playing for a long did time. Did you not originally grow up in this area? Is no, that why? Did I did. I went to uh, Fesedon School. It's a private school. Oh, I got it. Okay, I got it. All right. Well, let me uh, mention this uh, right off the top. I think out of uh, all the captains that Coach Q has ever named, you you five have probably had to go through more as captains, more adver deal with more adversity and have more on your plate than I think any other uh, Belmont football captains, uh, again, in the Coach uh, Q era. Uh, and I guess uh, the first place to start, of course, was uh, when you, you heard the news uh, that Coach Q had uh, cancer. I mean, what were your initial reactions uh, hearing hearing the news? I mean, it came like uh, with what just a few weeks before the start of what training camp and summer practices, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we uh, we found out a little bit before the rest of the team did. We found out at um, earlier, I think May ish area. Yeah. It was at the Chenery. It was at the Chenery. We were at, yeah, we had a, we were actually kind of recruiting for our the rest of our high school. You know, for the rest of the, when they're going to be a freshman and stuff. So you know, it was really interesting. You know. Hearing that, he told us at the end, and I think we all were like shocked because you know he's 
Coach Q is a very strong man, and we all like know him as strong. So like when you know you hear this, it's like wow, it's real, it's real life. Yeah, I mean, I definitely thought I didn't think it was gonna be anything of it. I mean, I thought it was just like oh, you know, this this isn't gonna be like a big thing. This isn't gonna be like radiation or anything like that. I thought just you know it'll blow over, but I mean, it definitely didn't blow over, and definitely was a, it was a long <laughs> process for Coach Q. And I don't think any of us really expected that when we first heard that news that we didn't. We didn't really envision the struggles that had come or just like the bounce back and the resiliency that Q had. So Yeah. Well let me let me ask this. Like the first time you saw him, like after you'd had a couple of treatments and you know, you you lost a lot of weight, obviously the beard was gone and he was bemoaning before we started rolling. Skinny, the, skinny uh, and fast. Rolling tape. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean yeah, certainly a, a, yeah, a sleeker and more aerodynamic <laughs> as he likes to put it. Uh, like just see, the first time you saw him like that must have been a little a little jarring, I guess, anyway, or uh, Maybe did it kind of put the whole, you know, what he'd been going through in, in some perspective too? I mean, it kind of, maybe it really hit home at that point or? Yeah, it was kind of interesting to see like the beard start to like patch up and like start to fall out. Cause like, I don't know, it was, it was kind of subtle at first. Cause like, I, you don't really notice someone losing weight until it's all gone. But the be the patches of the beard coming out was just kind of weird to see. And it kind of like made the whole cancer thing real. And I also would say, like, you know, he came in, I think, when he was first coming back from, you know, like, recovering, he had a mustache, and it was, you know, we haven't really seen that out of him <laughs> <laughs> ever. So he kind of also looked, looked a little ghosty, too, but it was it was real, and the scar was gnarly, so it's kind of real then. Yeah. Upon hearing the news, did the five of you, like, just get together on your own and, like, kind of try to talk about how you, you know, maybe it was going to have some effect on how you would captain the, the, the team for the upcoming season, or? Yeah, I feel like we definitely had to step up and take a bigger role this year, because, like, we had a whole new coaching staff coming in, and he had to go through the whole hiring process, and it was just a lot on his plate while he was going through that, so I feel like we had to step up and lead the players in a respectful manner. Yeah, and we also, like, kind of had to help Coach Silva out, you know, because he was really running all these lifts by himself, so I was like, I think me and Tuna were like, we really have to be here like now and to help him and like help him like control the boys because it can be, it can be interesting at times to control you know our whole team. But you know, I think it was just being there for Coach Silva and then being there for also Coach Q that kind of was like, we need to do this. Like, like it really was like, damn, like we're captains now. Like we are like captains. Like we gotta stick up. Well, in some ways, captains as well as assistant coaches, like you said, you had to help assist the other assistants a little bit and. And stepping up, so uh, yeah, a lot more responsibility for you guys. But uh, you know, you obviously you came through it uh, the better for it, and you handled it well, right? I mean, yeah. All right. Well, we'll you know, let's let's talk about the the season, and uh, certainly it got off to a bit of a slow start. Uh, you know, three straight losses, and uh, you know, so talk about kind of how you, do you think they were still kind of feeling the effects a little bit of you know Coach Q dealing with what he's dealing with, and just. You know, was it the opponents? Was it just kind of try to get everything to mesh together with the new assistant coaches and, and whatnot? Or what, what I think, think it was all of those things. I think it was just a combination of a bunch of factors. And we played some tough teams. Winchester was a tough team. Reading was definitely a tough team. And we were still really figuring out our identity, especially on the offensive side of the ball, I think. I think everyone will agree that, that we really, and on the O-line too, we really didn't have a identity and have a, 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 a drive that we've had in previous years. And then the offense wasn't clicking, and I think that's it's no one's it's no one's one's fault. It's just the you know combination of off season and then going into the season with such coaching turmoil. And I think that once we got to that Lexington game, that it really started clicking on offense and then defense together. I think that's what we were really missing, and you know in those first three games. I mean, if you look at it too, we were in all those games yeah. the first couple of weeks too. Like Reading, we were up ten nothing in the fourth quarter. Winchester. We scored a touchdown and got called back. We would have been down five in the fourth, so like you never know what could have happened. Right. So in other words, you're probably feeling more frustrated. Like you feel like you're on the verge. You know you can, you know you can do this. You can start beating teams with regularity. It's just you know, just a matter of kind of putting it all together in the you know 44 minute effort. Now it's right. No 48. 48. 48. 48. Sorry, you went up. Yeah, That's I mean right. I think it it's up. kind of a double edged. <laughs> it's kind of a double edged sword. You know, like it's almost easier to. <laughs> I don't want to say it's easier to lose big games, you know, but it, it's it's almost easier to stomach at times this notion that like, oh, we got blown out 46 to six, we weren't going to win that game no matter what, right? But you know, Wakefield was a tight game and we were nowhere near our best. Um, Reading was an unbelievably tight game. Winchester, as Justin said, was a tight game. So there was this sense of 
it's a double-edged sword. We knew that we were close, right? We knew that we were close, but there was also this, this grand frustration at being so close and knowing how close we were. We said it at Fall Awards Night. This team, and we'll talk about the record and all that stuff, but this team is 15 points away from a league title. You know, and they were picked across the board to finish last consistently by local media and local press like the uh, Daily Times Chronicle, who does a Middlesex League coaches quote unquote poll every year. I've been coaching in the Middlesex League for six years and have yet to be polled as to oh, what the finish would be. Okay. So it's an interesting poll <laughs> yeah, to me. Right. They were picked to finish last, you know, and, and we knew what it was that we had here, even with all the turmoil of the offseason. So it's kind of a double edged sword. You're super frustrated because you're that close. But you're also encouraged because you know you're that close. So there's this sense that, man, if we can just get a couple of pieces together and clean up a couple of things and execute at a couple of moments, and most of it, as Hoff said, was offensively. Defensively, we gelled pretty well. It took us a couple of weeks to mm -hmm. figure out the identity now on the offensive line, and that honestly was the big piece of it, right, so that we could get the, get the run game going. You know, um, Avery did a great job throwing the ball. You know, Hubsey and his receiving core did a great job catching the ball, especially in weeks two and three. Um, against Reading and, and Winchester, um, you know, and we needed to throw the gauntlet down on the offensive line, and, and we did. And, and Hoff was really one of the guys who picked it up and said, you know, this is unacceptable and we got to run the ball. And, uh, and then we rattled off, I think, three consecutive 200-yard games in a row So on the ground. So yeah. um, it, was a, it, was, it was a twofer. Yeah. Well, it kind of started, you know, obviously, you know, the win streak started with that Lexington game. Do yeah. you guys feel that... You know, was there something going into that game that kind of clicked? You, you, you had a really good feeling that you'd be able to start turning things around that night? Oh, yeah. We were playing our uh, freshman coach. He, he, had it, <laughs> he had it our freshman team when we were freshmen, and then he left, and then he's now the head coach of Lexington. Okay. So uh -huh. we got to play against him for the first time. So yeah. I think that had something to do with it. It was a very personal game. And yeah. I think wow. we all were like, we need to win this game. Like, there's no way we're losing to Coach Hill. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, it was a statement game, yeah. yeah, yeah. There, was, there, was a little mo there was a little moto, yeah. as yeah. we call it. There was a little moto in that game. There was a little motivation yeah. in that game. It's not like you guys, though, would have known any of his necessarily his coaching tendencies, right? I mean, you know, or... No. A, I mean, I, I think, you know, any time that... that um, Coach Almeida said this to me once years ago, that any time that you're playing against a former team in any way, shape, or form, the motivation is greater for that former team than it is for the current team, right? So these guys, uh, except for Rocha, um, Fessenden, right. yep. uh, <laughs> these guys who all knew Mike, right, knew Coach Hill, worked with him, uh, were in the weight room with him. He ran a lot of their freshman lifts back then when we were doing it in a kind of separate thing. Their, their fire burning to, to, to win is greater than Lexington's fire burning to like beat Coach Hill's former team. You know what I mean? Right. And, and same thing for me. I mean, this was the first opportunity that I've ever had to coach against somebody that I taught and, and worked with and mentored. Um, and, you know, I've done that playing Coach Almeida in my first three seasons. And, you know, Dad smacked me back just like he, he you know, he's supposed to. Um, and I was kind of excited for the opportunity to do that um, myself. Uh, it certainly worked out that way. All right. Well, you know, kind of going through the rest of the uh, the season here, uh, talk about uh, what are what are some other uh, things you remember about the uh, about the win streak and and all of that. Uh, I think just the contrast between uh, Arlington and Woburn. I think that was really like a, really strong to see that we were in a really just close, just back and forth game with Arlington, and it was just it. I mean, we, we came down to overtime. Uh, we stopped them on their, uh, I think it was a, it was a two-point conversion? No, yeah, it was, it was a two-point two two conversion. conversion. We stopped the two-point. We stopped the two-point, and that game was just so intense. That was one of the games I came out of feeling like, you know, the most dinged up and just the most like, wow, I just left everything on the table. And you go to the game like Woburn, and it was senior night, and we just we just went crazy. We went off. I mean, the team just, that was our almost our full potential. Everyone was doing their job. Everyone was doing everything. This, everyone was playing for the seniors, and it was just it was an awesome win. It was just a team win. It was really great. Yeah. Well, and I, I would think both the Lexington and the Woburn wins were especially satisfying. I know you already mentioned why Lexington would have been, but also just beating those guys for the first time. I mean, you'd been playing against them head to head for four years, or you know, and you know, be able to go up and, and beat them uh, in the varsity level is uh, you know is a great accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, especially first, considering the divisional season. jump, yeah. right? Like, and we've talked about this because I was actually listening back to some broadcasts too because I'm. A savage like that. And, wow. 
Um, we're we're actually we're involuntarily <laughs> here. I don't get a mug for nothing. You know? We're actually D three or honey, right? We're, or honey, right. which was fantastic. Right? Okay, was so fantastic. We'll, we'll let him know. You should. There's a phone number on the jar. So oh, I got right. I got to call. I got to call. Up. It'd be an interesting conversation. Um, no, I mean we got to play divisionally up by two divisions, right? We're D three, not D two, yeah. yeah. and Lexington's D one, and Woburn's D two, Reading's D two. So we in the, in my era here have never beaten a divisionally up opponent within the Middlesex. We've done it in our in our off league weeks. Mm -hmm. But Middlesex D two, Middlesex D one to us is a little bit different than the D two or D one team that we kind of select to play. Um, so like while like even winning against Milton last year, Milton's a division down. They're the D four South champions regularly, right? But they're still a division down. Those wins for me and I'm sure for the guys were were marquee wins. This program has not done that. I mean, this is the first. This is the first time since 2009 that this program has has a winning record in the league. And it's 12 years, man, since mm -hmm. Belmont has had a winning record in the league. Um, wow. That's a heck of an accomplishment it for is. these guys. Yeah. And and I want to be clear, and these guys know it, that this is the beginning for us, right? This is not okay. We had a good year because we had good guys. This is the, the upward trend of a developing football program. It took us five years to get through phase one, right? Mm. This is the first year of phase two, right? This isn't this magic immediate process. We don't play in a league or in a divisional contest where we, we can do that. It takes time to build, man. This, this isn't, you know, no disrespect to anybody, but this isn't like D7. The D3 North bracket is, in my mind, one of the toughest football brackets in the state. The teams that are in that bracket can hang with anyone. And uh, to win in it, to A, to get into it, but B, to win in it, man, you know, that's phase two, right? That's at the end of phase two is us making runs in the D3 North bracket. That's what we're looking at, at least. So. Right. Well, and you guys, you know, congratulations. Uh, obviously, I'm the winning uh, Middlesex League record. Also, for making the playoffs for the second straight year, uh, you guys, you know, again, kind of a little replay from last year. You run up to Danvers, though. I, I mean, I guess that's a game you, you know, probably don't want to <laughs> recall too much. But uh I mean, just, I guess, I maybe how good was that, that Danvers team compared to the one that you faced last year? I mean, you guys made a really strong second half comeback in the game last year and uh, this year. Uh, that, it was so. You know, it didn't, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we know we can hang with anybody. We're not scared of anybody, but, like, we just didn't play as, like, what we hoped to play. Like, we didn't play nearly as good as we should have. Or wanted to. Really. This is a game we want back, but, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. We just kept our head up and we won the next games. Mm -hmm. They, I think I think Coach Keys said it, but they sort of out toughed us. They they were they were a big team, they were a strong team, and once we came out there, and then they just hit us once. Everyone was sort of didn't really want to get hit too much again. I think for the most part, and this is a generalization here, but I think that if we if we like Avery said, if we just went 100 percent in that game and just came out firing, that would have been a game we could have won. No no question about it. Yeah. Well, like you said, though, you did bounce back. You, you won the final two games, and now you, you come into Thanksgiving, a winning record, a chance to add on to that. Uh, you know, five and four right now, could finish six and four first time, mm -hmm. uh, finishing uh, over 500. Uh, you know, is, uh, uh, you know, let me ask, because you've got all five, if you've seen your captains, you were all juniors last year, you were all on that team. Uh, they, they played last Thanksgiving uh, at Harris Field, a, a very memorable game. Uh, we'll, we'll actually start rolling some of the highlights here uh, from that game. <laughs> I, I want to thank Jeremy Meserve uh, for uh, for putting these highlights together uh, from the game last year. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, what, oh. tell us what you guys remember. Talk about this, uh, you know, all these onside kicks to start the game. Not a, not the greatest to start. <laughs> I, I think there's one of me up there. I think that's, uh, I remember, I think it was either the second or the first one. I was on the first line of the return team. And this, this stinks. How hard did that ball? This. It must have felt like a rock. Though. Yeah, it, it just like... came, it, right on my, I tried to move my thigh as it came in, and I moved it, but I didn't move it enough. Hit my thigh, I sort of ran back, and then they recovered it. It was just, I, I'm not, I have the, probably, I think everyone will test this, I have the worst hands on the team. <laughs> <laughs> so they put your, yeah, you're right yeah. up front there. Then, they, of course, obviously they ran that in that little fumble roost yes. kind of yeah. play. So, yeah. okay, this was, I believe this is the second uh, onside kick here. And, uh, you know, again, uh, more, uh, yeah, again, another kind of oh, line. Oh, that hits me. Uh, yeah. Was that oh, you? Oh, that was you on the second one, Ryan? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And uh, they get the, the big return here. I mean, this was just kind of a crazy, like, none of us could have, uh, seen this kind of a start happening and then uh so you know right there a couple plays in already 13 yeah. nothing i mean 
uh, after they uh, they kick the extra point. And what are you guys uh, feeling? It? <laughs> you know, you're going like two in a row. It can't happen a third time, right? And then. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think at this point we've started to creep up in our alignments yeah, then we had, a little bit. Right, then they try to pop yeah. it up and... Uh, they didn't try. Could have called for a fair catch. Well, yeah, no, they Yep, that was uh, Preston. Preston was a sophomore at that point. Um, he's young. You know, I think we said it in the post-game rehash or whatever, that uh, Preston was young. He just didn't know in that moment that he could fair catch it. Um, and that led to the Kamara touchdown, and that's it. That's the last point right there. So the we're like 133 score. seconds into the game, and it's already 20 to nothing. And, you, and your offense, you haven't touched the ball yet on offense. No, we are yeah, about so. to. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, <laughs> well Joe Havilow and I were on the call this game said it. You know, all you got to do is field one cleanly, and you'll be off to the race. Yeah, we made a substitution. You know. I think where Kai Joseph caught that kick. We, yep. yep, there he is. We, we, we brought the one hands in for that whole segment. We were kind of done with the onside kicks. And for us, again, we knew that them doing this said something about how they felt they could succeed. And then here's the uh, here's the first Belmont touchdown by Joseph. Just talk about what it, you know, playing in these kind of cold conditions, it's got, it had to be the coldest game you've ever played in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what's it like trying to just, you know, tackle, like fielding kickoffs, like you said? It, it's it's got to be tough. I mean, during the pregame, definitely you feel it when you're warming up. I feel like during the game, like, you don't really, like, think about it. Like, you kind of just, like, the, the adrenaline kind of takes over, and, like, you're just so into the game that you don't really think about it, and, like, you just play like you normally do. I think we were all focused. We're like, we're, we're gonna, we need to like, we need to like, you know, like, win. We need to like, you know, like, we need to like score points. So like, we're just like kind of working hard, and we're like, it's not about the weather. Yeah, this is Avery's touchdown. I'm gonna let Avery kind of talk a little bit about this. Uh, <laughs> so like, what's uh, that was your your play call all the way on that yeah. one? Yeah, <laughs> fourth down. You know, got to make something happen. <laughs> That's right. I, that I always, a, I, I always, I always play. chuckle yeah. when you're like, Avery must have called his own number on that one. Like, no, Q called Avery's number on that one. Actually, on that one, it was Q and Coach Avery uh, called Arno's number. We'd been an eye pretty much the whole time. We figured if we spread it out, they'd start thinking pass heavy and give us some space up the middle, and Arno can do it with his legs. So. Yeah. Well, how about that too, Avery? Let me ask. I mean, you didn't drop back to pass once. Did you know before the game started? Like, I'm, I'm just going to be handing off. I had all no that. clue of the game. Plan. <laughs> I thought, yeah. You're just getting it as the calls come in, right? But, yeah. Uh, whatever works. Just keep running it down so there. So you didn't mind <laughs> not having to throw. In no, I didn't mind. It was okay. actually it was a light day. I mean, you still got the job done. <laughs> a light day. There you go. And with that, uh, the. Uh, the uh, the six game winning streak for Watertown finally came to an end. Congrats, you guys! I mean, that's that's something uh, always going to be memorable, and especially uh, again the way you guys did it. That was, uh, you know, what, what other memories do you have about uh, about that game uh, last year? I just remember in warm ups, I came down. I think I, I went camera right at the queue when this happened. But the first thing, the first time warm ups, when I get down in my stance, I just feel pulling a muscle in my in my shoulder of some sorts, like behind my back, and it was just it's just because of the cold. I mean, we were so cold out there. And you, I'm just thinking like, oh geez. And so, but once you get the adrenaline going and everything, I just remember, was, didn't even remember it till after the game. Like you won't think about, it. you don't think about the cold, you don't think about being dinged up. You just think about, oh, this is the game. You gotta do your job. And I just remember that. I think we all knew that even after that third onside kick, we all knew that the offense had some weapons and that yeah. we could run up the ball and we could definitely score some points in this team. I think no one counted us out. No one in the team was thinking, oh, this is game. You know. I think we all knew what we were capable of, and we all knew that we could come back. Yeah, nobody lost faith. Like, yeah. We, you know, again, I think that was the story of the season. Like, you know, like, again, you know, we're not, like, no one projects us to win it all ever. So, you know, we can't really lose faith in ourselves, and I think that's what's important. You know, like, yes, our receiving core didn't catch up all that game, but, you know, I think that was the whole tale of the season. Like, no matter how how we, like, got to win, like, we just wanted to win yeah. us receiving cores. You know, we would, I would block all game. I would, even this Thanksgiving, if we had to just, if I had to block all game to win the game, I would do it. No, no matter what. It's all about family. It's all about winning the game. All I'd want to do is win the game. And I think that's the tale of Belmont. Like, now, a days, you know, you don't really, a lot of us are, like, are more, like, we want to win. So, like, you know, it takes out of us, like, you know what, you know, you got to do your job. And, like, you know, no matter what, do what you, do what the team needs, you know, to win. I think that's the tale of the story now. It's been a, a, a really cool transition, you know, to see that that's something that's become pervasive amongst all of our guys, you know, um, as opposed to, I think, early, we had guys who bought into that identity, but it didn't extend throughout the entirety of our unit as much as it does now, right at the end or the conclusion of, of phase one, you know, so to be able to have guys, you know, who aren't demonstratively frustrated or angry when they individually don't play the role that they want to play. I mean, 
Arno wants to throw five touchdowns every game. Hubsy and Rocha want to catch five touchdowns every game. Hoff wants five sacks on the defensive line every game. Tuna wants 15 lead pancakes and probably two touchdowns and 10 tackles every game. But that's not necessarily how the game plays out. You know, you do what you can do against the teams that you play and you stick with what works. And if what's working is working, don't change it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to sit there and be like, well, we've run power 25 times. We're gaining eight yards of carry every time we run power. But, hey, let's throw a fade ball because Arno wants to pass. And he's not, he's not sitting there going, this is something that I need in order to be satisfied and happy. You know, we win together, we lose together, man. At the end of the day, like, you know, people will remember your team's record. But they're, they're not going to remember, you know, who had the most touchdowns, who had the most yards. who had the, They're not going to remember that stuff, man. And, and that's really what's been, like, our – our center point and um, it not to talk as these guys know I can talk forever but you know I think it comes off of, of you know this full experience of, of the front end of the year too you know uh, I, I needed the family you know I, I, I needed it everyone you know not just one um, wouldn't be here without it and and so that kind of carried into our season you know um the kernel that was planted i think last year was really one of the first years where we felt that with guys like delhi and sagarian and sam harris and jared edwards and rakai and kills this like core family love like just whatever we got to do to win let's go and these guys picked that ball up and, and transformed it into their version of that and i'm hopeful that the guys behind them have watched them and listened and learned as they've led and that they're, you know, going to replicate that going into next year. So we were sitting in there, and I remember saying it in the huddle. Guys, this is, this is a good thing for us. And everybody looked at me like I had five heads. And, but this is what they think they have to do in order to beat us. <laughs> so like what – yeah, yeah, so right. what, does that, what does that say? Like, I look at that like I don't have any other way to say it. Like, when I was standing there on the sideline, the reason I was able to stay calm in that situation, 20 points in two minutes, man, uh, fear. It was fear. That was fear. You're doing that because you're scared. You don't want to give us the rock, right? And so I get it. I wouldn't want to give that two-headed monster at running back the rock either. Yeah. Well, um, not to mention that was Watertown's worst team in a decade. Yep. I mean, they'd, 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 they'd had record, they'd had a, they'd had a rough year. They had a losing yeah. record. We were coming off of some good dubs. Our running game, they'd seen it. You know, they they also saw some holes in our kick return, which they exploited. But like I looked at that and said, this, you know. <laughs> Let's, let's derive confidence from this. Let's stay calm and be confident in this because, like, they don't want to give us the ball. Like, it's the first time in my career at Belmont that somebody has not wanted to give us the rock. <laughs> you know, I've, I felt awesome about it because yeah. then we went out and scored 33 consecutive points. There you go. Right. Yeah, you can't be – see? What do the kids about, do? You talk, about being <laughs> the, you talk about being the underdogs all the time, Zach, uh, especially. You you know, but, yeah, you're right. They didn't want, they didn't want you guys touching the ball and uh, – you know, Certainly, it's it's it's, a, it's nice it's nice to be on that it's nice to be on that side of things a little bit. And I want to be really really clear that like you know we take every week as it comes, we take every practice as it comes, we take every game as it comes. Like this is not a team that's walking out there being like we're five and four and we're caught. You know, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna win this. And we're, that's never been our attitude, man. Like every team that we play is dangerous. You know, you can you can lose to a team that's worse to you. You can beat a team that's better than you. This is football, man. Anything can happen on Friday night under the lights. So our attitude is saying we got to go out there and work equally hard every week, no matter who we play. And, and the second that we stop doing that, that was our lesson from Woburn last year, right? 2-0, and coming into Woburn. Woburn was 0-2. We're like, yeah, we're big dogs. We just beat Framingham. They're D1. We just built, beat Milton. They're state ranked. Woburn's 0-2. And, and they smacked them up. And we played probably one of our worst football games and lost our first league game. And it kind of was, a, was an awakening. These Again, these guys were there for that. So this year, one of the big differences – we haven't taken anybody for granted. Even like, and, and you can see it, like I, I'm talking a mile a minute. You go into Arlington, same deal. There's a team that's had a rough season. That team was one of the toughest teams we've played all year. They put everything on the line for that game. That was one of the most physical games we've played. Coach DiLoretto had his guys ready to go, you know, and they were one in, one in four when we played them, one in five when we played them, and they hit us in the mouth. So who's to say, you know, week to week? That was us for years. You know, you're going to come into Harris Field, you're going to get all you can handle, and, and now we're kind of in an, another phase of that thing and having to work to make sure that we don't get ahead of ourselves, man. We, we want to make this two in a row, and in order to make it two in a row, we got to win one, one game, 48 minutes of one. You guys have some, like, follow-up thoughts? Up there, <laughs> Sorry, boys. Yeah. 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 Please, go ahead. we got plenty of time. <laughs> I said the Arlington game, you know, I think that, you know, like, yeah, they were not 
as good as us, but you know, and I, and showed in the game, you know, it, they took us to overtime. Yep. Like that, that was crazy, Ugh. you know. Like that game was back and forth and back and forth. And that kid at quarterback is a stud. Yeah. Tyler's so like that was really yeah. interesting, and like it that was your wildest game of the year. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Hands down. Yeah, I would say loved that. it though. No, oh, loved yeah. that. Games. Was a, that was a really fun yeah, game to play actually. I think That's Tuna had the the stop right. That was your yeah. tackle. That was your tiffle yeah. to win yeah. it. Yeah. He could barely see. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was, he was, yeah. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Let me ask you, Ryan. Uh, you know, you talk about you know you get to throw those what is it called pancakes as you're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you is, is it still a pancake whether it's on offense or defense whether you're throwing it for, as a fullback oh, or as yeah. a linebacker? I guess as a linebacker it's more you got to yeah, grab it up tackle and you're just yeah. flattening them. I mean, which I mean, like which do you prefer uh, do Ooh. like as far as the hitting? Is it you like do? offense or defense? I love defense. <laughs> <laughs> So forget yeah. about those pancakes and just go yeah. right, grab the guys and pull Because yeah. you can do more, right? I mean, I yeah. guess is that part It was like of it. in Lexington the week before. They got the Stars of the Week, and then all of a sudden they played us and they weren't on the Stars of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> I like that part. Yeah, wow. you've got to have a little bit of a desire to uh, ruin somebody's day to be a good defensive player, like, you know, and... and um, I think, like, you know, obviously Avery doesn't play defense, despite asking me repeatedly. Every so often he'll get <laughs> into practice and get some cornerback rep and yeah. get toasted by Rocha or Hubbard or something like Never. that. Mm-hmm. Never? No. Um, so. And, and Hubsy doesn't play a bunch of D either. He's primarily a receiver. But these three guys uh, all play defense. Right. And, um, you, you know, all three of them have a desire to make somebody's day in that context, like not in a human context, in a football context, to, to ruin somebody's day. You know, so like I know I get that sense from Ryan, you know, the play that sticks out for me is is um, uh, the gun divide screen, <coughs> Reading screen, uh, two back release screen that was coming towards our sideline and Ryan saw it and chased it down with a big tiffle in the backfield and got up. Right. <laughs> we locked Roach up on the Beverly kid who's going to UNH um, in our last game. Um, Rocha followed him all over the field. The kid had a tough day as a result of that, you know, and you can kind of see that, that mojo and that motivation, you know. And Hoff very quietly um, was one of our most consistent defensive linemen and one of our most consistent tiffle and sack guys. Um, and had that would a couple be tackle for loss. Tackle for loss, yeah. is. <laughs> For those of you, you know. Uh, um, maybe um, and you, you, see that, like you see that sort of sort of same mentality of like I want to take this person's day and kind of make it a bad day in these two hours um, and we talk about that inside the whistles and the whites to play this game you know within the context of the rules of the game um, you got to be kind of a jerk you know you do um, and then you know we want you to be able to turn that off after the 48 minutes are done and you know help a grandmother carry her groceries to her car you know shovel somebody's mm-hmm. walk and, and you know be a good you know the football is a great release to <laughs> get your demons out for you know, two two hours, two and a half hours, and and uh, especially if you're a defensive player, and then we try to return to being the man of character that we all believe Marauders should be. Um, that's been an attitude on our defense all year. I mean, this is the best defense we've had, statistically, right? I mean, we're we're and and our point total it, is not honest because we've given up special teams touchdowns like whoa, right? So like this defense allows 14 points a game. The defense allows 14 points a game, right? I mean, that's the best defense we've had. Yeah, that's certainly going to keep you guys in every game, uh, too, as you're, you're playing. But, you know, bringing this around a little bit, like when you're playing defense and hitting, I mean, you know, especially when you look at an opponent, say, like Watertown, I'm guessing you probably have players on the Watertown team that you know you may even be mm-hmm. friends with outside oh, yeah. of, you know, school or whatever. And uh, so now, you know, you play them in this game, and, and now you all of a sudden, you know, like the like coach says, you have to kind of have to be angry and, and all that and take it out on them. Uh, how does that uh, – uh, how, you know, how do you, how are you able to do that? It's like, hi, friend, and I'm about to smash you in the gut here. Really. Oh, man. Go tackle. I mean, maybe we start with you, Ryan. You were mentioning how would you like to. Yeah. <laughs> do you have yeah. friends on the Watertown side that you know? I mean, I you? definitely play, me and Avery definitely play Pop Warner with a couple of them. Right, because it used um, to be a merged yeah. entity. Yeah, Belmont, yeah. I think yeah. Belmont, it, the Pop Warner program still Pop is, yeah. right? Yeah. Belmont, Watertown, Pop Warner. And that, yeah. Right, that's got to be interesting. So is, is, you, when you're really young, you're, you're growing up, you're, play, you know, you're playing as teammates, and now all of a sudden you know, it's, a, it's a big holiday rivalry, and you've got all the, all the adults and everybody you know, rooting for, for their town and, uh, and their school. And so now you guys are like going head-to-head. It's got to be a little different, right? I mean, it's... Yeah, we grew up with a couple of those kids, played with them in Pop Warner, so it's kind of like... You got to put friendship aside and just go out there and win the game and then sit, say what's up afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone knows like when you're on the field, there's like not really friends on the other side of the ball. Like 
you kind of just kind of play your game. I think everyone knows that. Yeah, yeah. My, my dad always told me from, age, boy, from a very young age, like, you're not out here to make friends, you're out here to win. And so that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, you're not making friends, um, no matter what sport you play. I mean, I play lacrosse, so I know a lot of these kids from lacrosse. Uh, I've played with them on, like, uh, combined teams. But and that happens a lot, even in lacrosse. I know a lot of kids from yeah. other towns and stuff. It's like you, you know a lot of kids. I think Roach will say the same thing about hockey. Hockey, like a lot yeah. of select teams and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so, and, but even when you're playing those guys, you know, you just got to be like, all right, these guys aren't my friends. They aren't your friends in the context of the game. After the game, shake hands, give them a hug, whatever. But especially when it comes to Watertown, especially when it comes to this game, this very, like, important game to us, probably the most important game of our career, th there are no friends out there. You are leaving everything on the field, and you're out there to, to, to win, and you're out there to, if you got to hurt someone to do it, you're going to hurt someone. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. I always, I mean, I always had motivation a kind of greater sense of motivation to, to play and still with coaching, you know, when, when there's somebody on the other side that you know, you know, um, and it almost triggered a greater sense of motivation to go out there and, and win. You know, uh, my, my business partner um, and I played high school football against each other, uh, and he never, you know, misses an opportunity now, 15 years post, almost 20 years post, you know, to remind me that he threw for 438 yards and four touchdowns, you know. Um, you know, we're 30. You couldn't stop him. <laughs> I'm not bitter. I know, it doesn't. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, you know, so like, but it's, yeah. a, it's a very similar deal. Yeah. And it, uh, it speaks to like, this is something that's truly unique to Massachusetts high school football, you know, as we've talked about before, is Thanksgiving football. Nobody else does this, you know, and um, not everybody, this, depending on who you talk to, listening to your TOS, your full TOST with Cosmo for the heavy hitters, man, mm -hmm. was on there. Yes. Um, this is the, whether this is the 99th or the 98th, depending on your count of it, mm. right? The snow game. Um, yeah, the, I don't know how you can count a game that's been. No, the game in 1940 game. shouldn't be counted. I mean, the record right. has us 48 and 44, so that's what 92 Two plus five, five ties. Times, that's yeah. 97. That with one canceled, that would make this the 98th playing. Right. Because the 40 game wasn't played. Um, there's not a lot of places in America where two towns have met for a hundred years. Yeah. A right. hundred years, man. A hundred years. Yeah. You know, like that's. And yet here, I think it's still only like about top five. There are quite a few. Uh, yeah, well, Boston, like Medford, Latin Malden, English. Latin English, yeah. or a couple of the older ones, man. But I mean, we're in the top ten. Oh yeah. And that's just so cool. I mean, it's just so cool, man. It's 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 deep rooted, and we tell these guys, man, like once you step out onto that field on Thursday morning, whether you do it as a sophomore, a junior, or a senior, like you are a part of something that is a hundred years old. And if you don't feel like, you know. The ghosts of the ancestors rising from the field, you know, and filling your spirit, man. Like you need to check yourself out because it's it's special. You well, let me at, last ask you guys. I mean, do any of you have your whether your dads, uncles, anyone who had played in the game or played Belmont football in the past? And there, they tell you stories and everything. Uh... Yeah, I had uh, my cousins both played. They all played in the Thanksgiving game like five, six years ago, the Rocha twins, and um, okay. they had a younger brother named Matt Rocha who played in it. And they always talk, they always talk to me about it. Like, they always come to my games, and they always talk about how special it was on Watertown to play, like, the friends and stuff like that. Did they ever beat Watertown? Were they on any, because uh, Watertown um, had win streak before last year. Yeah. So. I think they did one year, but I'm not completely sure. Yeah, my dad played at Belmont High School when he was in high school. Mm. Um, I forget if he beat Watertown or not. I think he did, but I definitely remember he used to tell me stories about how like there used to be so many people at the games and things like that, and he still goes to the games yeah. still. So. I mean, Michael Santoro is awesome. He's on the sticks a lot, where he runs the chains a lot for us. He's been great. And did Timmy Hoff play here? He played at uh, Winchester High. Winchester yeah, High. Yeah, so he has a he's a very similar. He's got another long yeah, rivalry. They though. have the uh, the Woburn Winchester yeah. game. And my dad, uh, my dad was a tight end. He was a very good player at Winchester High, and he he definitely embodies a lot of like the same spirit, just from a different town. You know, no, the same sure. attitude towards football, just a different town. Yeah. But I just remember uh, back to the sort of like thing about Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving Day game is my freshman year when I got called up. Even though I wasn't playing, I wasn't going to see the field. I think all these guys, yeah, all these guys were called up. Yep. And I just remember running out in the field and just it's completely different from any other game you've ever seen or played in or beat a part of. Just run out the field and have at home having. My freshman year, there's probably thou a thousand people there. Yep. I, it, it's crazy, yeah. crazy, and it's just there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it, and that energy and the excitement and that knowing that you're part of something like that is just it's 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 unrivaled. It's it's crazy. Yeah. You know, and it speaks to to family. 
you know, and, and what it is that we hold at the cornerstone of our program. You know, and we're talking about it, but like, you know, I, I kind of chuckle talking about, you know, Michael and, and Dennis and Kim and, and Tim Hoff and um, Diane and John, you know, like these, these guys as parents are as big of a part of our family as, as they are. You know, like I get, you know, emails from Tim Hoff every week, pretty much, you know. Um, Dennis brings over his famous chili at the end of a cold week last week so that we can sit up in the coach's office and, and eat chili together. You know, Michael works the sticks. Sue contributes to the athletic office. Diane's front and center team dinners, man, right? And, I mean, if you haven't seen John Arno's tiger suit on Thanksgiving Day, <laughs> yeah, right, like, right, yeah. you haven't lived, you know. <laughs> I've seen that outside of Thanksgiving. You, you <laughs> see that thing yeah. from Mars, bro. Yeah. I love, you know, and like. I thought he was the Cincinnati Bengals mascot. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, that, but to me, like, that's one of the coolest things about what it is that we've been able to do here is this sense of community that exists throughout, you know, our family, our football family. Um, and it extends so far beyond um, the football field, you know. Um, when I was two days out of surgery, one of the first people to come and visit me was uh, Jake Parsons and his mom, you know? And then I couldn't go a week without without Bama's m and his mom bringing me ice cream. Of course, you, you remember know? Jake was on the show last year. was on the show year, last year, you know? Um, and, and you know, every every week, like one of our junior's moms, Nate Fox's mom brings me a Tupperware container of, of food because she thinks I'm getting skinny and I need to eat. You know, and, and Chris Piccioni, who graduated three years ago, his mother's bringing me a tray. It's all food related. It's bringing me a tray of, you know, chicken and asparagus on, on egg noodles and stuff like that. You've never like eaten that. any Coach, better, right? you need to eat, you know. <laughs> and, and, and we chuckle at it, but, like, that's what we've built here. And that's what they've built here. They're a part of this, you know. Like, it's not me and my staff or whatever. It's these kids buying into what it is that we're doing and believing in it and their parents believing in it. And it's, um, I'm super grateful. You know, and so like the least we can do is go out and put everything on the line on Turkey Day and get this whole family a dub, man, because the turkey tastes better for everybody. If you're a Belmont football family, the turkey tastes better when you win. You know, sure did last year. That turkey was good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's the other thing, too, is you guys, uh, you know, now that you've snapped uh, Watertown's win streak, you got to go to their field and snap. I'm trying to think the last time, might have been uh, 2011, might have been the last time uh, uh, Belmont beat Watertown at Victory yep, Field, away. so uh, and that was at, at that was at the culmination of uh, what was then a seven-game win streak for Belmont, and, and gave them a a lead in the series that they hadn't had since the 1940s. Yeah, went back a, to took a long time to come back in that. But well, let's let's just talk about this year's game again, making the trip over to Watertown, and uh, so you don't have the home crowd behind you, but uh, hey, a lot of a lot of Belmont, uh, you know, fam family friends will certainly make the trip. It's not like it's a long uh, uh, jaunt over there. So just uh, your early thoughts on, on this game this year. and. Uh, um, if it's not negative 20 degrees, a lot of people. <laughs> there will be a lot of people. I've seen the forecast. I, I know the, the weathermen around here get a bad rap, yeah. but I, I, I'm pretty safe to say it will not be. And I just want to say for the record that last year when it was negative 20, the crowd wasn't bad. Yeah. No, Considering yeah. it was negative 20 degrees outside, like I turned around and looked there, I go, these people must be freezing. At least these guys are moving around. Yeah. You know, the sideline yeah, jacket. The heaters on them. With the heat, yeah. you know, yeah, these yeah, people yeah. sitting in the stands, like y'all must oh, be yeah. cold. Oh, yeah. You we were there. Cold. Yeah, we were there. <laughs> We were there and we were cold. We were cold. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Jeremy, and myself. Yep, it was very oh, cold. Man. <laughs> but uh, you know, certainly made it all worthwhile the way uh, the comeback. Uh, sure and, you know, sure uh, did. There, but so other uh, other thoughts here uh, about yeah. the, you know about just you know your you, you know the last uh, football game in your high school careers too. Yeah, it's, so it's kind of uh, crazy actually. You know, I think it like really puts it in perspective. You know, what Coach Q says that you know we're part of something bigger than ourselves, and I think that's where like it like hits home. I think it, why it feels like such like a kind of a home game. Honestly, Watertown's not that far. It's yeah. like it's very close to our houses, personally. Yeah, and it's like down the street, like down the street from our houses. So game. yeah, so no. it's it definitely feels like a home game. And you know, it's cool to see all the guys that have you know left their legacy. So you know, you kind of again motivates you to play hard and you know what you want to win because you know you do see that you see the guys with their varsity lettermans on. You're like, wow, like I'm gonna be part of that soon. So you're like, I gotta really leave it out on the field. And I know I am, and I know Hoff probably will be too. Then again, we don't really know if we're going to yeah. be playing in the next level. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I think same thing with Hobbs. I mean, this is probably my last football game to be completely yeah. honest. You know, you never know what's going to happen, but most likely this is my last football game. I'm not going to play football again. 
and to have it be in Watertown in somewhere. And I was just thinking about this, that the second place I've probably played more football games, the only place I've played are, are just as many football games as home is, is in Watertown. And that's, that's yeah. a, it's a familiar field. It's, it's, you know what you're getting, you're getting into there. And, it's, uh, it's, and we're excited. I mean, we're excited. I don't think anyone's going to be nervous about go, having to go to Watertown. I think we're all just, we'll take the game wherever. If we have to play it on a, you know, in a playground like uh, <laughs> Fargo, we'll, we'll play it there. We don't care, you know. And we just want to play. We want to have fun. And I think that just having that last game, it's going to be special. It's, I think it's important and special, special for the guys. The other seniors, too, who aren't going to play uh, football ever again. And so it's going to be, they're going to leave everything they have on that field. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I definitely think that even, even if, like, I hope to play in college, things like, and Rocha does, too, like, even if we go and play somewhere, we're never putting, like, a Belmont jersey on again. So it's still not the same. Like, I'm not playing with Avery, most likely, ever again, who I've played with since, like, I was, like, seven. And, you know, I've played with everybody here since, like, the seventh grade as well. So it's just the last time you get to play with the people you know that, you, that you've grown up with. Yeah. So. I feel like it's fitting for me and Ryan. We started out in Pop Warner on Victory Field every year, playing a Victory Field for Watertown Belmont. And now we get to end our careers there. But in Belmont circle, uniform, right? yeah, it comes yeah. full circle. It's crazy. I mean, I think it's crazy to think about it too. Like, I remember last year as a junior, and Coach Q always says, like, juniors, like, you guys got one more year left. It's like, think about that. And I was like, at first, I didn't really take it like, like that. And like, now looking back at it, knowing that I have like three practices left and a game left, it's just crazy to think about. Like, it, time just flies by, yeah. especially playing football. There's like nothing like playing football. Like, it just, time flies and you just don't see it go. Like, it's weird. I mean, we do a tradition every year where we, where we call Legacy Day, which happens the Wednesday before. Thanksgiving Day, um, <clears throat> and we, we kind of line the path to the field house with helmets, and then the rest of the team kind of lines the path upstairs to our freshman locker room. And uh, we let the guys kind of walk around. This year we have our practice field behind the, the rink, so they'll walk back into the mud pit and kind of hang out together one last time on, a, on the practice field. Um, and then they walk one at a time kind of up into the freshman locker room through their brothers. Um, and then we sit down, and every uh, coach <coughs> gets to s say something about what the season of football has meant to them. Um, but every senior then gets to get up and talk. And it's a closed session, right? Like, we close the doors. It's just staff and us, right? It's just like our coaches, Sarkis, our trainer, um, and the boys. And um, I think, for me, those are the most powerful memories that I have of Belmont football. Um, it's you get to see what it is that this sport means to so many people beyond just, um, you know, winning and losing football games. And uh, we talk about that a lot in our program. I don't want for any of these guys, and I want to be perfectly honest, like I know the old saying, like, it's the best days of your lives or anything like that. If the high point of your life is senior year Thanksgiving Day, I have a problem. I want these guys to go out, man, and live amazing lives, successful lives to create businesses and families to go get degrees, to change the world, to change their communities, to do, I want this to be, you know, for me, senior year of football needs to be a stepping stone for these guys to do something even greater than that, right? Like you've tasted greatness here. You've tasted what it means to be part of something bigger than you. You've tasted what it means to sacrifice for the good of something else. Take those lessons and bring those lessons to whatever it is that you do next. Because if you're sitting on a bar stool 35 years from now talking about, you know, how great Thanksgiving in 2019 was, I have a problem. I have a problem, man. Life is bigger than that. This is a stepping stone for that. It's important to us. And that's what Legacy Day always reminds me of. That what it is that we do here is bigger, is bigger than this sheet of scores. Yeah? It's much bigger than that. And for anybody who doesn't understand that, I kind of feel, I feel bad, I guess. You're missing the greatest thing about football. There's a reason why um, football athletes have a tendency to be, to be successful men, you know, and, and it comes not from the physical battle, but the mental strength and resilience. I'm really excited for Wednesday um, to hear the messages from these guys. Um, we get to think that we teach them a lot, and honestly, uh, I think they teach us as much as, 
as much as we teach that. Maybe not Avery, but I'm sorry, Avery, I can't. Uh, it's too easy. <laughs> too easy. Well, as you get ready to springboard off into the rest of your lives, <laughs> yeah. what, what are you going to remember most uh, about uh, your, your four years? You know, maybe the biggest memory, the biggest takeaway mm. that you'll have uh, about your four years playing uh, uh, for Coach Q. We'll start with Avery. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Just oh, you were saving this for Wednesday, right? At the like No, no, no. <laughs> no. I, <don't> <laughs> I mean, like, running back and forth from the huddle to him, like, consistently every single play for two years now, and he's just, like, been by me, been coaching me, and it just means a lot, and I'm going to, like, remember him forever as, like, such a good guy, and he Aww. taught me a lot. <laughs> like, no matter how much he hates me. <laughs> yeah, we, we, have, we, we love each other, so. We do, yeah, man, awesome. and, uh, you know, he, I – as these guys go, if I can just say something ab ab about them real quick, each of them, is that um, you'd be hard-pressed to find somebody who kind of <laughs> – I look at Avery and I rem I'm remind[ed] to love life. It, it sounds really weird, but, like, that's, that's what I see when I see Avery Arno, is a reminder to just, like, you know, it's got that same yeah. smile, like he just got away with something that you didn't see. <laughs> um, you know, I just, I just remember to go out there man, and, and, and love life and have fun. Um, one of my favorite memories with Arno was against Beverly. I told him to throw a deep stop to Preston, um, and he threw it and we got picked off because the linebacker expanded. He wasn't in his read structure, and I was frustrated at first, but then I realized that I had told him to throw that route. And I got to go up there and say, man, that's mine. That's not your pick. That's mine. You know, and so, like, we have a, we have a cool relationship. Yeah. Just, he just gives me confidence to go back out there and just be myself. Don't think. Just to be myself. Don't think. One, two, electric boogaloo. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, sounds good. What about you, Zach? Um, the, wow. There's, like, so many, like, moments throughout my career and, like, playing for this, you know, family that have really stuck out to me. But I think, you know, just... Going back to like all the lifts I've been to throughout my years, especially me and Tuna, I think just all the memories with the guys, and you know, you create friends that you know are going to be your friends and family for the rest of your lives outside of your own personal family. And I think, you know, you you can always count on you know this family outside of your own family. And I think that is the beauty about football and, and why it's unlike any other sport is because you have this family aspect of it. And why like it's really I really wanted to buy into it, you know, through my years is because I love the family and like I would do again would do anything for it. If it doesn't, even if it do, like, doesn't mean catching passes all day, you know, like I just want to like win for the for the guys who like work with me and you know like make it at all. And again, just all the memories that I've created, have, you know, really kept me going throughout my career. You know, looking forward to playing my last football game Thursday, and it should be a fun one. And leave my legacy on the field, leave everything I have because I don't, I got, I got no more football games in me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think too, like Hubsy, you know. There's a level of competitiveness in Zach that's contagious. Um, he's very serious on the football field. You know, he's he's the the Rocha. Since Zach doesn't play defense, he's on our scout offense a lot, which is great because it's one of the best receivers in the Middlesex. Oh, he didn't play. He didn't play any defense. Oh, because he's on the roster. They listen. Yeah, I mean, we give him a defensive position, but that's just you know. I mean, Arno Arno has a defensive position. I don't think we even gave one Arno. But, you know, like the Hubsy Rocha matchups are in, in practice are some of my favorites because Rocha is, in my mind, an all league defensive back, even though he didn't get the selection, which he certainly should have. And, um, and Hubsy is, in my mind, an, an all league receiver. So it's, it's kind of a best on best moment. And Avery is our scout team quarterback, you know? So it's like varsity, varsity. Hubsy is an uber competitive fellow. Um, he, he has a unique relationship with failure, which is that he doesn't like it, but it doesn't stop him from doing the work in the future. Whereas a lot of people who have a negative relationship with failure fail and then say, well, I'm not going to do that again because I failed at it, and so I don't want to try. Um, Hubbard's reaction is kind of the opposite of that. They're like, I failed at this, so give me the rock again. Um, and that's just something that he can really take with him um, forward. He's one of the hardest working guys we got. Um, I could count <clears throat> in three years the number of workouts that Zach Hubbard has missed on, I'd need two hands to do it. That's it. Yeah. Like, right. it's under 10. No. All right. We'll uh, move on to, uh, to, to, to Tuna here. <laughs> tuna. I love, all these, I love all these nicknames you guys. These are, by the way, these are all Coach Q originated nicknames, right? Some of them. Uh, I mean, yeah. some of them you need, like, He's just Arno. Yeah. Hub, Hubsy is easy. Yeah, right. Tuna. 
Well, I was going to say, you never worked, were you ever Colby's before you started playing football for Well, Hubsy, maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But Tuna, Hubs, I think, yeah. was us, right? Yeah, yeah. Tuna, was, tuna was Belmont, uh, Belmont High School, definitely. <laughs> again, Q. why is that again? Cause, uh, I don't know, he's the key nose. I think it's because um, they used to call me Toro, and then yeah. Toro means, um, oh, no, yeah. Toro means tuna in Japanese, I think. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, right. Um, it means bull in English, right? It does. It means bull in Spanish, Spanish, Spanish yeah. Yeah. which would have been a good one for him. And then, it, and then he, he gained a bunch of weight going into junior year, so we called him Fat Tuna. And, uh, I'm going to say this on air. He farts a lot. <laughs> he's a farter. Not wrong. Um, that seems to be the news a lot lately. So, <laughs> yeah, but so he became tuna, he became tuna, tuna skunk. Tuna yeah, skunk. He became tuna skunk uh -oh. after that. Tuna skunk. You know, if you haven't... At really inopportune moments, too. Like... It, you know, you'll just be sitting there kind of talking about something or talking about football, or often when he exerts, it's just like... <laughs> okay, well, Ryan, uh, Ryan, aside from the gaseous emanations, what, tell me what you're going to remember about four years of playing football. Oh, my. Sorry, Ryan. It's, it's hard to, like, pinpoint one moment, but, like, definitely because it was more recent, the Woburn game. So I actually didn't play in most of it. I, like, got hurt in, like, the first quarter, so they just, they just pulled me out. And... So I was kind of like worried because me and Derek were out and like I didn't know how, you know, Shelly and Zach Moss who went in for me, I didn't know how they were going to respond. And then like a couple play, like I don't know, at some point I remember this one play where they had an outside run and Shelly demolished this kid and I go, all right, like we're in good hands. So, <laughs> you know, all that right. was definitely cool to see. Great. I, I know you want to do a comment oh, follow-up, yeah. but we're also running low on time, and I want to make oh, sure yeah, everyone gets yeah. it. So let's go to uh, Justin. is awesome. I mean, yeah. I think <laughs> it's you. just like the aspect of the like, locker room. Like, there's nothing like coming from your last class, coming down and seeing all the guys playing music and prepare for practice, and then just going out there and just like kind of kind of like the relationships you make uh, like, in the locker room. I think it's something special that no other sport really has. All right, we'll wrap up with the. Uh, yeah, Ryan Hoffman. you know, I think a lot of these guys said like not a specific moment for me. I think for me, just I'm I'm very proud. I'm very happy about how uh, my work ethic and how I've sort of become. I mean, I'm you know five five ten on a good day, and you know, not the <laughs> five ten and a half. Uh, yeah, on a, yeah, on a good day. Yeah, I'm, I'm right now at five ten and a half. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> but, uh, I'm 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 not a, not a big guy, but I'm playing in a position where you know offensive and defensive line. You know, I put the biggest dudes there. I, I'm the smallest linemen on the team that's you know that plays and it's for me just and I've always played offensive line always played defensive line and it's just been for me to to, to succeed in varsity football in the Middlesex League which is you know, a legit league with legit players and for me being you know small undersized whatever I think it just I just think it's my work and how much I put into it I'm really happy about that I'm, I'm just happy that for all the people that support me like coach Q I mean even you know my uh my Junior Marauder coaches, uh, Coach Jamie McIsaac, just great guys, and, and everyone just helped me so much along the way. And I've had to put in a lot of work, and I've had to, you know, adapt and 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 just go through a lot of these things that have just been, you know, been really difficult, and it's been hard, but it's been rewarding. I'm happy how it turned out. Well, that's the great thing about high school football. You don't have to be huge to yeah. play. You just have to want to put the no. effort in. And, I mean, uh, I think like to swing the, through these guys, and I see the clock, so I think I can be pretty quick here. Man. Okay, I mean, like, 30 for, seconds, Coach. 30 seconds apiece, right? Mm. Not, no, not 30 you know, seconds apiece. Oh, total? 30, You're yeah. wasting my time. Tom. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I mean, like, you know, with Tuna, with, with Ryan, I mean, I, I joked that in, the, in his freshman year, Ryan didn't say two words to me, and then after that, I couldn't get him to shut up. You know, and, and it, you've never met somebody who desires to know more about football than Ryan Santoro. I think all the guys would agree. Oh like, totally. I'm oh walking gosh, off of the yes. field when it's 15 degrees of practice, and Ryan's stopping me at the bottom of the fire escape when all I want to do is go upstairs and get warm. And Ryan's <laughs> like, Coach, can I ask you something about this formation? Can I ask you something about that formation? And I, you know, I love it. I might sometimes be like, come on, Ryan, it's freezing here. But like, realistically, he's one of the hardest working guys we got. Um, you know, and, and Rocha, man, um, <laughs> Roach is Rocha, you know. I mean, he's one of the most affable kids, you know. He's just an easygoing dude. He just goes out there and he does his job. But underneath this kind of, like, smiley, you know, demeanor is this absolutely fierce competitor. I mean, I would say that Justin's one of the fiercest competitors that we have. He wants to win every single rep that he takes. And Hoff is very similar in that regard. Um, both of those guys work tremendously hard on the field. They output everything, right? I've never seen them... Uh, come off. I'd say this for all of these guys. I've never seen them come off the field and have something left. 
right, and look at them. Yeah. And, and for Justin to take control of our DB core this year and, and be the guy back there um, communicating and calling the signals and to be our lockdown corner man says a lot about who he is. And for Hoff uh, to take the, the burdens of the offensive line upon his shoulders as we went in there to rehab it, um, and to make it into what it was is something that he can take with him for the rest of his life. He needs to be proud of that. Yeah, well, you know, guys, I, you know, I can't believe that we're out of time here. I, I, you know, it's been a, it's been great meeting all of you, and I want to wish all of you uh, the best of luck on Thanksgiving. Go beat Watertown, Woo. and then uh, also beyond, you know, that Watertown and beyond everything with your your collegiate and uh, you know whatever plans you have after high school. Uh, you know, all the best with that too. So I want to take this opportunity as we wrap up this special. I just want to thank my entire crew on the TV simulcast side of this Toddcast for, for whom without their hard work. And there was a lot of work getting in before we started uh, recording. So uh, we got excellent video and everything, uh, thanks to them. Uh, and, of course, uh, also uh, don't forget uh, the Toddcast with Coach Q. You can find them online at belmontmedia.org slash podcast. Get the SoundCloud app. It's a free app. You can hear it on there as well. And uh, all the links uh, to these uh, programs can be found on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can become a Facebook fan. Time out for Sports Talk by searching the title. And our Twitter handle is at TLSTDFC. Coach is at Q underscore Coach. Marauder Football at Marauder F Ball. So for, for Coach Q, as we get a full shot out here, for Coach Q and all five of our senior captains here in the studio today, my name is Todd Boyle. I want to wish all of you a very happy Thanksgiving. Say go Marauders, and thank you for checking out the TOC Podcast right here on the Belmont Media Podcast Network. Go Marauders!